we are on the journey to hope. As I mentioned earlier, on the journey to hope, we need to take someone with us on the journey. And on the journey, we need confidence. We need confidence for the journey. And our scripture, our text this morning uh, is from Mark, the Gospel of Mark, the 11th chapter. And uh, this is a um, text that we normally read for Palm Sunday. So I want you to hear this uh, gospel message from the Gospel of Mark. The 11th chapter will begin with the first verse. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a coat tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here shortly. They went and found a coat outside in the street tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that, that coat? And they answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the coat to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road while Jesus spread, uh, while others spread uh, branches that they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. And Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Would you pray with me? Help us to hear you, Lord. Help us to see the message that you have for us. Help us, Lord, to prepare our hearts to be compassionate and to commune with one another through Christ. Amen. On the journey, we need confidence for the journey. But in light of the devastation that we uh, experienced on Friday, we know that we need much more than confidence for the journey. For we need faith on the journey. So I want to read another scripture to you. Because I, I know that this question is on the hearts and minds uh, of the people. Whether you have this question or not, whether you've been through the storm or not, there are those who've been through the storm, and the question that they have is, where is God in all of this? Where is God in this? And so if you would, um, hear another gospel message from the Gospel of John. Uh, in the 16th verse, uh, 16th chapter, pardon me, in the, uh, verse 33. And this is what Jesus had to say. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. At a time like this, in devastation like this, can you trust 
and rely on God at a time such as this? Can you trust and rely on God in every circumstance? Can you trust and rely on God in the storm? Is God really listening? Does God really care? How could this be? And how could this happen if God really cares? People have lost their lives. People are injured and suffering. And people have lost property, lost homes. There's loss all around us. And so we want to know, where is God? How is it? that we can find that place where providence and the grace of God merges with mass destruction such as what we've seen. Where is God's grace? And then there's another question that lingers in the minds and hearts of people. Not only where is God, but why didn't he stop it? Why didn't he change the course? Why did people have to lose their lives? You know, trying to make sense of all of this is uh, very difficult, especially for the people who have gone through the disaster of the storm, who have family members who've gone through and who have family members who've lost their lives. That, that's a pretty tough situation for many people. And, and there's no making sense of any of this for some people. What interests them, of course, is knowing how to deal with what they're feeling. Because there is, there's, there's hurt and anger there's frustration. There's grief and doubt. And for some, there's relief. But there's no making sense of it. There's no understanding and dealing with the emotions. And it seems like they're all rushing in at the same time. All kind of emotions. Fear and anger and relief all at once. You know, we've heard stories and we watch the news and we've uh, heard people as they witnessed the storm and what was going on with them during the storm. And people say, where is God? Some of those people have answered the question, where is God? Because they talked about the miraculous uh, occurrences. Well, there was a 14-month-old that was blown 10 miles from home. The rest of the family lost their lives, but this, this little girl uh, ended up in the middle of a field. Nothing but God. Donna Trossen was telling me about her, her son and his family and the fact that they were in a basement and trees were pointed down into the basement where they were that could have just you know, gone on down into the basement where they were. We've heard stories and testimonies of how God saved. But we've also heard stories of people losing their lives and people being injured. And so how is it that God decided to take some and to leave some? If, if God is such a caring God, why didn't he just stop all of this? Why didn't he just do something different? Where's God in all of this? People who have faith also have hope. And people who have faith find themselves relying and leaning on God and calling on the name of God in times of trouble. I want you to know God is not just there for times of trouble. But those of us who 
have a relationship with God, the first thing we do in times of trouble is to call on the name of Jesus. We, we, we call on God first. But people who don't have a relationship with God find themselves incredulously in trouble because they don't know God and because they don't know where to turn and because they don't know what to do next. That's one of the questions, isn't it? When the storm has passed, what do we do now? What do we live now? What's going to happen now? How much trouble is it going to be to rebuild, to get everything that we had before back? Really, the key, you know, is that those who know God It's kind of simple. It's really simple. Those who know God know the sovereignty of God and know that we can question all we want to question. Yeah, where was God? And why did God allow uh, this to happen? When we ask that question, there are some questions that we ought to be asking ourselves too. What we, where would we would have had the storm go? What direction would we have had God send it? Who would we have decided or chosen to lose their lives? You see, we, we may not have those answers. I sure, sure don't have them. I don't have those kind of answers as to why. Or why not? Or, or why didn't God just not let it happen at all? I, I don't think that's the question, why or why not? Or even where was God? Because, you see, God gives us uh, a free will. We have choices. We can make Choices about our lives. It's not uh, up to us to make certain decisions. We, we don't know when we're going to die or when we're going to leave here because it's not up to us. It's up to God. But what is up to us is that we make the choice to follow Jesus. That we make the choice to live our lives righteously that we make the choice to be ready when he comes. To be ready whatever happens. The choice is ours. He gives us a free will. God could have made us like puppets and made us to do everything right, to do everything good. But what kind of life would that be if we didn't have the opportunity to make choices? I mean, there are some choices we can't make because uh, Adam and Eve made them for us. You see, we are sinners, whether we want to admit it or not, because of the first sin. And, and we do evil things to one another because of the choices that we make. We, we, can, we choose to live our lives either for God or not. The choice is ours. And if we are not making the right choices, then we ask the question, where is God in the devastation? Because we're really not ready for what's going to happen. We don't have our lives uh, aligned with God's will. And so we're not ready. The choice is ours to be ready because God promised us that he would be with us. He didn't promise us he was going to tell us when the time